Hello, everyone. Welcome back. In the last lecture, we introduced the basic concept of monopoly and the reasons for its formation. We already know that the profit maximization decision of the monopoly firm still needs to satisfy the condition of MR equal to MC. Today, we continue our study of the monopoly pricing and discuss the welfare effects associated with monopoly pricing. First, let's look at the relationship between the pricing of monopoly firms and the own price elasticity of demand. In the lectures of consumer theory, we talked about the relationship between firms' marginal revenue and the price elasticity of demand. That is, MR equal to P times 1 plus 1 over epsilon. This is obtained by taking partial derivative of the total revenue function with respect to output level. The profit maximization requires the producer's output decision to satisfy MR equal to MC. Applying this condition to monopoly producers, we obtain the relationship between the monopoly firm pricing and the own price elasticity of demand, P equal to MC divided by 1 plus 1 over epsilon. The monopoly firm is the only supplier of the market, so the elasticity epsilon here is the price elasticity of market demand. From this equation, we can draw two general rules about the pricing of monopoly firms. First, the more elastic the market demand, the lower the monopoly pricing. Remember that the price elasticity of demand is usually negative. What we truly care about is the absolute value. So we drop the negative sign and simply compare the absolute value of the price elasticity. For example, epsilon equal to minus 3 is more elastic than epsilon equal to minus 2. Taking these two elasticities into the equation of the monopoly pricing, when epsilon is equal to minus 3, P equal to 1.5 times MC. And when epsilon is equal to minus 2, P equal to 2 times MC. As we can see, the monopolistic pricing is lower when the demand is more elastic, that is when epsilon equal to minus 3. When demand is more elastic, the consumers are more sensitive to price changes. So the producer will lose more consumers when it raises price. But a lower price could attract more consumers and is more profitable. Second, recall that for a linear demand function, the price elasticity of demand is different on each point of the curve. We use the linear demand curve to show that the monopolist will always produce at the elastic part of the market demand curve. That is, when epsilon is smaller than minus 1. We can prove this statement by contradiction. If the monopolist produces at an output level where the demand is inelastic, that is, epsilon is greater than minus 1, but still smaller than zero. Assuming that the marginal cost is positive, then the price is a negative number, which is obviously impossible. The economic intuition is as follows. If the monopoly produces at which the demand is inelastic, then increasing the price by 1% could lead to a higher total revenue because the demand decrease will be less than 1%. Meanwhile, since increasing price lead to production decrease, total production cost must decrease. So when the monopoly is producing at which the demand is inelastic, the profit 
must not be maximized and can be increased by increasing the price and decreasing the output level. Since the pricing of the monopolist is higher than the marginal cost, we define the part higher than the marginal cost as a markup, that is P minus MC. Substitute the expression of P into this equation. You can get P minus MC equal to minus MC divided by 1 plus epsilon. This shows that when the marginal cost is constant, the greater the absolute value of elasticity, the smaller the markup. For example, when epsilon is equal to minus 3, the markup is half MC. When epsilon is minus 2, the markup becomes MC. If we divide the markup by the price, we can get the markup ratio. P minus MC divided by P is equal to minus 1 over epsilon. This means that the markup ratio of a monopoly is inversely related to the price elasticity of demand. We call it the inverse elasticity rule. This is also the third rule of monopolistic pricing. The greater the elasticity, the lower the markup ratio. Having learned the monopoly pricing, let's look at the economic profits of monopoly firms. If the market price is higher than the average total cost, that is, P is greater than AC, then the monopolist will have a positive economic profit, which is equal to the average of the rectangle in the figure, that is, the profit per unit of product multiply the number of the products sold. Moreover, this positive economic profit may exist even in the long-term production, because it is impossible for other firms to enter a monopoly market due to various barriers to entry. Therefore, some scholars also refer to the long-term economic profits obtained by monopolistic firms as monopoly rents, which are regarded as the returns of the basic factors that form a monopoly, such as patents, special knowledge, unique resources, and so on. At the same time, we should see that Although monopolies may obtain positive profits in the long run, the size of the profits depend on the relationship between the average cost and the market demand. As described in the previous figure, if another monopoly firm has the same market demand and marginal cost, but its average cost curve is higher, then for this monopoly firm in the right figure, P is equal to AC. The economic profit is there though. As we can see, obtaining high profits in a monopoly market is not always inevitable, and the size of the profits is not a good indicator to measure the degree of monopoly power. However, if P is smaller than AC, the monopoly producer faces economic loss. In the long run, the monopoly firm will stop providing products and exit the market. Therefore, in the long run, the economic profit of the monopoly must be non-negative, greater than zero or equal to zero. The third topic of today is the economic efficiency of the monopoly market, or social welfare. In the previous part of this course, we introduced how to measure the economic efficiency of a resource allocation result. We use the concept of Pareto efficient. If a certain arrangement of resource allocation could maximize total social welfare, then this arrangement of resource allocation is Pareto efficient. 
otherwise, the market is Pareto inefficient. The perfect competitive market provides us with a good basis for comparison. In the study of perfect competitive market, we know that the market equilibrium of the perfect competitive market satisfies P equal to MC. Using the concepts of consumer surplus and producer surplus, we know that the consumer surplus CS is the area of the upper triangle in the figure. The producer surplus PS is the area of the lower triangle. And the total social welfare is the sum of CS and PS. That is the area of the large triangle in the figure. This area is already the maximum possible. Increasing or decreasing output level could not enlarge the size of the triangle. So we see that the perfect competitive market is Pareto efficient. How about a pure monopoly market? According to what we learned earlier, the output decision of a monopoly firm is determined by MR equal to MC, and the price level on the demand curve corresponding to the output level is the market equilibrium price level. Applying the same calculation of consumer surplus and producer surplus in the monopoly market, we can see that CS is the upper triangle and PS is the lower trapezoid. The social welfare of the monopoly market is the sum of CS and PS, which is the large trapezoid part. Comparing the social welfare of the two markets, we can see this trapezoid area in a monopoly is smaller than the triangle area in a perfect competitive market. If the monopoly firm increased the supply of output, it could raise the total social welfare since the producer's cost is smaller than consumer's willingness to pay. Therefore, we refer to the part of social welfare that is not achieved due to monopoly as debt weight loss. That is to see, monopoly markets are not a Pareto efficient form of resource allocation. It involves efficiency losses. Finally, let's talk about profit and social welfare of a natural monopoly. In the last lecture, we introduced that there are large economies of scale in the production of certain industries, so that the production of a large producer is more cost efficient than that of many small producers. In these industries, the whole market only needs one manufacturing to serve the market demand. The entry of other firms will have very high production cost, which makes it difficult to compete with the large incumbent so that it is difficult for new firms to enter this market. Because of the special feature of its production, this type of industry tends to naturally form a monopoly. That's why we call it natural monopoly. Typical examples of natural monopoly industries include power supplier, telecommunication, and railways, etc. In the absence of government regulation, natural monopolies still make output decision based on the principle of MR equal to MC and the relative size of the prices and average prices under this output level determines the profit of natural monopolies. Due to the existence of economies of scale, the average cost of natural monopolies declines in a very large range, but different position of the AC curve will affect profits. If the average cost is at the position of AC1, natural monopoly firm will have positive economic profits. If the average cost is in the position of AC2, natural monopolies will face negative economic profits. As far as social welfare is concerned, 
the Pareto efficient output level occurs at the position of P equal to MC. That is to say, the natural monopoly firm causes efficiency loss of total social welfare, the size of which is the triangle in the figure. All right, in this lecture, we further studied the relationship between monopoly pricing and elasticity, the profits of monopoly producers, and the welfare losses caused by monopoly. That's all for today. In the next lecture, we will continue to study the pricing of monopoly by asking what if the monopolist could charge different prices on different consumers? See you soon.